The Canon SL3, also known as the 250D, is the lightest Canon DSLR camera with a fully articulating screen. It features a 24.1 megapixel APS-C size sensor, Canon's Digic 8 image processor, it has great video functions including dual pixel autofocus and even 4K video, and it's a pretty popular camera to learn photography on too. And in today's video, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. We are going to show you step by step how you can use the Canon SL3 250D for photography. So welcome to the Kai Creative Canon 250D slash SL3 photography guide and all of the photos that you just saw were taken on this camera here the Canon SL3 and for more photos and videos and to keep up to date with the creative stuff that we're doing make sure that you go and check out the Kai Creative Instagram and Facebook socials. So first up, the simplest way to get started taking photos on the SL3, like most Canon cameras, is to set the dial on the top of the camera to auto mode. Set your lens to auto focus, if it has auto focus, and then simply start snapping away. And the camera will make all the decisions for your settings. All you have to do is look through the viewfinder, hit the shutter, and that's the easiest way to start taking photos. And once you've taken a picture, you can press on the blue play button here, and you can run through your images via the LCD screen. So that's the easiest way to get started, but most of you want to go beyond using the auto mode. You want to actually learn how to use this camera in manual mode like a professional photographer. And to learn about photography, as with all my photography guides, we will need to cover the basics and in particular, we need to talk about exposure. Exposure can be controlled through three factors, ISO, aperture and shutter speed and these make up the exposure triangle and you might have heard about these before. Now don't worry if you have no idea what I'm talking about, like I mentioned earlier we are going to break things down step by step so you have exactly what you need to get started with photography on the Canon 250D SL3. Now for this video we will be using the Canon 50mm f.1.4 lens so when you look carefully at your lens when you take a picture you will notice that there are blades that close up and these affect the amount of light that is let into your camera and ultimately the amount of light landing on the sensor of your camera and this is what we refer to as the aperture. A good way to think about this is to think about the curtains in your home. If you open them wide, lots of light comes in, or if you only open them slightly, only a small amount of light is let in. And we measure aperture using something called f-stops, and you will see this on your lens, so a number like f-stop 1.4, f-stop 2.8, f-stop 4. The smaller the f-stop number, the larger the aperture will be and the more light you will have hitting the sensor. So as an example, the Canon 18-55mm EFS lens has a variable f-stop from 4 to 5.6. And this happens as you zoom the lens in on its focal length. Essentially, all you need to remember is the smaller the number, the larger the aperture will be. So for this lens, more light will be let in when the f-stop is at f-stop 4 than at f-stop 5.6. To change the aperture on your SL3, first of all turn your camera to the on position on the top dial and set it to manual mode by turning the dial to M. Open up your LCD screen and if you see the live view, you can swap it to the menu by pressing this camera button here. If you see a black screen, try tapping the info button here. You can now change the aperture setting in the menu using the touch screen. First by pressing Q and then selecting the f-stop number and swiping side to side. You can also do this in the live view by pressing the camera button and tapping on the f-stop number and then again swiping to change the value. You can also change the aperture using the camera buttons in both live view or in the menu. All you have to do is press and hold the AV button here and at the same time use the scroll wheel on the top to run through the aperture values. And if we set it to wide open to the max f-stop of this lens, which is f-stop 1.4, we are allowing the maximum amount of light onto the sensor that this lens will allow. And we can actually take a series of photos here with different aperture values to highlight what the picture looks like as we move through the smallest to the widest f-stop numbers. So that's the f-stop and how to control your aperture. Next up is ISO. The ISO refers to the sensitivity of the camera sensor to light and on the SL3 your camera has an auto mode and then goes from 100 up to 51,200 ISO. 
So if you have a very low ISO, like 100, the sensor is less sensitive to light. And if you have a higher ISO, like 1600, it will be much more sensitive to the light that is available, which will brighten up your picture. A higher ISO will allow you to shoot in darker areas because your sensor is more sensitive to the light that is available. But the problem here is that it can add in a lot of noise and grain to your picture at higher ISO values. And on a crop frame camera, which the SL3 is, it's generally a rule of thumb to not go over 800, maybe 1600 ISO if you're really pushing it to avoid ending up with really grainy images. So to change the ISO in the menu, tap the Q button and then the top button marked ISO and then you can swipe on the LCD screen or turn the scroll wheel to select your ISO value. You can change your ISO in live view mode as well by hitting the camera button, tapping the ISO button on the bottom right and then scrolling through the values. Again, we can take some example photos with low ISO values all the way up to higher values to demonstrate what your pictures will look like. So that's ISO and how you can control the sensitivity of your camera sensor to the light that is available. Next up is shutter speed, and shutter speed is how long you want to leave the shutter open to let light in. It's like opening and closing your curtains. You can open and close them very quickly for short bursts of light, or you can open and close them slowly, allowing more light in over a longer period of time. And we measure our shutter speed in fractions of seconds, up to one over four thousandth of a second to really freeze motion, and all the way down to 30 seconds, which leaves the shutter open for a lot longer. And we can set this on our Canon SL3 by simply turning the top scroll wheel left or right and that controls the shutter speed directly. No need to press any other buttons. And as with our other parameters, this works in both live view and in the menu view on the LCD screen. In live view, we can simply tap the bottom left option for shutter speed and swipe to the value that we want. And once more, we can highlight how changing your shutter speed affects your photos with some example pictures. So fast shutter speeds allow us to really freeze the motion in the picture and slower shutter speeds can be used for things like long exposure photography, where we leave the shutter open for a longer period of time to create different effects with lights. And here you can see a few examples where we use slower shutter speeds to create different effects with light. For your shutter speed, you can work at full manual, but the top dial also allows you to set your camera to shutter priority mode, and this is represented as TV. And this is where you decide your shutter speed and the camera decides what aperture you need. Another thing that you might want to do if there's a lot of action going on is to turn on the continuous shooting mode. And you can do this on the SL3 by going into the menu, going to the second page and selecting drive mode and then changing it to continuous shooting. You can also set this via the camera live screen on the LCD by hitting the Q button in the top right corner, tapping on the drive mode and then selecting continuous shooting from there. And now you can take up to five photos a second. So this is a good place to talk about the focus points and the Canon SL3 has nine focus points when using the optical viewfinder. And you can bring up your focus points by pressing this button here and you can adjust to the point you want to use by either tapping it on the LCD screen or using the scroll wheel or dial pad to select the focus point that you want. And if you look through the viewfinder, you will notice a red dot moving. And when you've selected that point, when you take a photo, that area will be in focus. One thing to remember here is to have your AF or autofocus switched on on your lens. You can also set your camera to automatic focus by scrolling through all the options until all the points light up and it says automatic selection. This will let the camera decide for you. When it comes to photography, a lot of people say that they like that blurry background effect. And this is referred to as a shallow depth of field. Depth of field is the focus relationship between the background and your subject of interest. And this is essentially controlled by your aperture. As we've mentioned before, your maximum aperture opening will be dependent on the lens that you're using. So if we look at this lens here, the Canon f stop 1.4, the maximum aperture is f stop 1.4. And that will allow a lot of light in and we can really isolate our subject from the background using f stop 1.4. And here are some examples of using the Canon 50mm 1.4 wide open at f stop 1.4 to create create photos with that shallow depth of field or blurred out background. Like the TV shutter speed priority button, the Canon SL3 also has an aperture priority button which is AV and this will allow you to set your aperture and the camera will choose the shutter speed for you. Your camera also has a portrait mode represented by P and you can select that via the dial and in portrait mode the camera will think that there is a subject in the foreground of the frame and choose a shallow depth of field to keep the human subject in focus but the background blurred. 
Now, as you adjust your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO settings, you can take a meter reading of the amount of light by hitting this button here. This is the AE lock button and has a little star on it. And it will show you where your current exposure lies. Ideally, you want this line to fall in the middle or maybe slightly underexposed towards minus one if you're going to do some editing of your photos later on. But what you don't want is for your photos to be overly exposed or too underexposed because then your photos will be too bright or too dark. And if you are overexposed or underexposed, you can start adjusting any one of these three parameters, your ISO, aperture or shutter speed to correct your exposure. But remember, if you have a high ISO, your picture is going to be grainy. If you open up your aperture, your background is going to be blurry. And if you use a slower shutter speed, movement in your pictures will also be blurry. So hopefully you're starting to see the connection between aperture, shutter speed and ISO and how all these work around the light that is available to you. And really a good tip here is to just play around with your lighting and composition with different camera settings and see what results you get. Another great option on the SL3 is the ability to shoot raw images. A raw image is just that, an image that contains the raw data captured by the camera sensor. So raw files are uncompressed, they take up more space than a typical JPEG image, which are compressed images, but having the raw files gives you so much more creative freedom in your post-production work. So how can we set up our Canon SL3 to shoot in RAW? We can do this by selecting menu, go to the very first camera option, and then the very first option again called image quality, and move across to the RAW or C-RAW option. C-RAW is a newer compressed version of RAW. I know I just said that RAW is uncompressed, but the newer C-RAW file types allow you to save more space on your SD card while retaining a lot more information than a JPEG image. You can also save a JPEG image at the same time by selecting one of these JPEG options. So with our RAW files captured, let's very quickly jump into Photoshop to see how we can start to edit our photos. So here I have a selection of photos taken on the Canon SL3 when we went away for a day to Leeds Castle and you'll notice that there are duplicates of each photo. That's because one is a JPEG image as we can see here but also there is a corresponding CR3 image or RAW file and we can open those up in Photoshop to edit or color grade and that's exactly what we are going to do. So here we are in camera raw 14.3 as you can see this is the .cr3 file and we can start to edit this so the first thing i want to do is pull back the highlights so that we can see the cloud formation or more details in the clouds i'm going to lift the shadows slightly for the face and then i'm going to slightly pull up my whites and then crush my blacks ever so slightly just to give us a little more of a contrasted look I'm going to add a little bit more texture to our image, a little bit more clarity. The dehaze will add a tiny bit more contrast. You can really make the colors pop by increasing the vibrance and you can see a lot more life being added back into the photo now. If we go to our curves, we can slightly brighten it using an S curve and also contrast it slightly, pulling it down and lifting up the blacks as well. I can then go to the color mixer and if I go to the hue, I can make those greens pop in the grass more. I can also make the blues pop more in the sky and also in the moat around the castle too. And I'll increase the red so that we have a bit more red in our face as well as our lips. I can also make things pop by going over to saturation and increasing the blues as well as the greens. And we can do the same thing to the reds also. I can compare the two photos side by side so you can see my JPEG, original JPEG image here as well as the color graded RAW file. So color grading your photos and making them more contrasted can really make them pop on places like social media and make them stand out. So hopefully that should be enough to get you started with your photography journey with the Canon SL3 in manual mode. We did cover quite a lot of information in this video so if there's anything that you're not 100% sure on maybe just watch through the video again or leave a question or comment down in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you. So that's it for me today guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked today's video don't forget to give us a like and if you haven't done so already don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that little bell for notifications. All that I've got left to say is stay creative, stay safe, imagine, implement and inspire. Happy shooting on your Canon SL3 and I will catch you next time on Kai Creative.